This is part two of our TV lift cabinet build sponsored by TVLiftCabinet.com. The top needs five one by sixes and we'll glue them up into two different sections. The first one gets three one by sixes and the other one gets two. We're gluing these edge to edge and we want to avoid gaps as much as possible. So when you're picking out boards, take your time, go through the whole pile and try to find the boards with the straightest edges possible. I bought six foot red oak boards, but you could buy pine. Even the select pine is about half the price of this red oak. I like that the oak is a denser wood and it'll stand up better to dents and scrapes. I also like the way that it stains with a dark walnut stain. I've got both sections of the tabletop here and they're all dried and sanded and what I need to do now is cut them down to their final length which is 55 inches. Anytime I do a glue up I always leave myself some extra room because it's really difficult to get these flush on each end. So now I can bring the circular saw on the track over here and get a really nice clean square edge on each end. After that it'll be time to cut out the lid on this bigger section. So what I'll do is measure four and a half inches from each end and then cut those off with the circular saw. Now the width of the circular saw blade, which is also called the kerf, will be the spacing between the lid and the side pieces and that will allow us to open and close the lid. After these two ends are cut off, we will glue them to the smaller piece. Now the lid also needs some clearance between itself and this other piece. So we're gonna have to take about a 16th of an inch off of just the lid in the front. I'm dry fitting this lid just to make sure that functionally everything's gonna work right. So when the TV lift extends all the way up, we need this lid to stay at less than 90 degrees so that once the TV lift goes back down, the lid will close with it. And when I put the lift in here and held up the lid and tried to eyeball what the angle was gonna look like, I realized it was gonna be really close. So I went ahead and just made this easy plywood mount and it brings the lift two inches further in and allows the lid to lay a little bit flatter. The top is gonna to be attached with these figure eight fasteners that swivel back and forth, and that allows the top to expand and contract with the seasons. These fasteners are installed just below the surface here. So I'm gonna take a three quarter inch Forstner bit and drill a really shallow half hole. So we'll put the point of the Forstner bit about an eighth of an inch from the edge and drill a shallow hole. That looks good, so now we can attach it with the provided screws. And I think these are just number six screws and they're probably about five eighths of an inch long. You want this tight enough so that it's not rattling around, but you want it to be able to swivel back and forth. Notice that I'm angling this so that it goes back this way and that's so that I don't break through the plywood here. As I mentioned before, the top is gonna expand and contract this way across its grain. So we need to put figure eight fasteners on this end and on the other end. But I also wanna be able to hold it down in the middle and that wood came from the hardware store and it's actually fairly cupped after I started cutting it and I don't want it to look humped once the tabletop's installed. So if I would have planned this ahead of time and had known that I was gonna do this piece, I could have installed it flush and then we could put figure eight fasteners on it, two on each side. But luckily I did not glue this, so I'm just gonna remove it, raise it up here and I'll fix the plan to reflect that. Now that the front part of the top is fastened down, I can fit this trim and I'll push that right up against the top to make sure it covers any gaps and it's gonna be fit with miter joints. I can also now install the lid with this piano hinge and what I'll do is put this in the middle 
This is a 30 inch hinge, so I'll have eight inches on each side, and I want it flush with the top here. The important part of this is that the hinge cannot be below the surface, or when you open the lid, it's gonna scrape. So I'm gonna get it as flush as I can, and if I make a mistake, I want that mistake to be just a little bit too high as opposed to being too low. So I'll attach this with two or three screws just to test it, and then we'll put the lid into place, get it positioned with the gaps even all the way around, and then we'll attach it to the lid. I'm done building the cabinet in the top, so now all I need to do is put the finish on. I'm gonna paint the cabinet with an acrylic paint that dries to a really hard finish, and then the top gets a dark walnut stain with polyurethane clear coat on top of that. Before I paint, I wanna give everything one last light sanding. I've got some wood filler in different places that needs to be sanded down, and then I wanna remove any greasy fingerprints or anything like that. I want to thank TV Lift Cabinet for sponsoring this video. Go check them out at tvliftcabinet.com. They've got great quality lifts and they also sell cabinets if you're not into building your own. But if you do want to build one of these on your own, there'll be a link below to the free plan. Go and get that and then head over to one of these videos and we'll see you over there.